Welcome to your time management revolution. This is time management fixer Helene Sugura. In today's episode, I'll be sharing a previously recorded interview during which we're discussing time management and mind management. Enjoy! Hello, world. Welcome to Discover Your Talent, Do What You Love, number 566. I'm your host, Don Hutchison. Every Monday and Wednesday, I interview someone from around the world who's discovered their talents to do work they love, to create a life of success, satisfaction, and freedom. On Fridays, I interview a well-known expert from the fields of personal or business development who share experiences, tools, and insights to help our listeners along their journeys. I'm delighted to bring you our featured expert, Helene Segura. Welcome, Helene. Thank you very much, Don. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. The author of two Amazon best-selling books, Helene Segura, has been the featured organizational expert in more than 150 media interviews. During her time management keynotes and workshops, she shares her mind-bending framework for decreasing interruptions, distractions, and procrastination so that companies can spend more time generating revenue. On weekends, she can be found sneaking adult beverages on the lawn bowling court. Her newest book is The Inefficiency Assassin, Time Management Tactics for Working Smarter, Not Longer. So today's topic, Helene, is how to tell your time what to do. I love that. So tell us how to tell our time what to do. If you know of anybody who has ever uttered the words, I wish I could do that, but I don't have time, this is who this segment is for. You might be an entrepreneur just starting out, or maybe you've owned your own company for 10 years and now you're super successful, but you don't have enough time. You just feel like a chicken running around with its head cut off. Or maybe you work for a company and you feel like this work is never ending. There is never enough time in the day to finish everything. That's exactly Exactly who this program is for today. Good heavens. Well, I'll tell you, it's for me, too, because I'm pretty organized after all these years. But, man, you can never be too good at this, can you? No, you can't. And you always want to make sure that you create enough time in the day to have a life outside of work. So that's why this topic is so important to me. I could not agree more. I could not agree more. And so, as you, you know, you have a strategy set up for fairly distant strategy, but then you break it down into parts. And, mm-hmm. you know, we're always just talking about the the monthly strategy, the weekly strategy, the daily strategy and tactics that you have to do. And it's just, <laughs> it's mm-hmm. almost mind numbing at times. So give us your wisdom. Tell us, give us some tools and insights on how to do this better. Well, I'd like to start off with an overview of my framework, because if you understand these three parts, then it'll be much easier for you to dive down deep into the tactics that you need to use and, more importantly, be successful with them. So my three-prong framework is the CIA. Yes, it's a play on the Central Intelligence Agency because I love spy themes and thrillers, and I figure this is an easy acronym for everybody to remember. And The C stands for create clarity. As much as we would all love to run out and buy the perfect calendar or download the perfect task app, if we don't create clarity first, we won't be able to use and utilize that calendar or that task app. So by creating clarity, what we need to do is figure out the most important priorities in our work life and our personal life so we know what it is, what we're working for, and also who we're living for. Now, the I is for implement structure and flow, and this is where we dive down deep into tactics because it's really important to build in structure into each day and into each week. But at the same time, if you deal with humans or technology, you have to be able and willing to slide things around because you know that there is no such thing as a perfect day. Mm -hmm. And then the A is for assemble your team. We cannot do it alone. It's really important to surround ourselves with helpful, supportive people. People. So that is also a big part of time management. Yes, yes, yes. So break it down into the little pieces and help us uh, put this into place, at, at least in, in a conceptually. Absolutely. So going back to the C, create clarity, you want to make sure that you list your top three work priorities and top three personal priorities and post them 
So that way you're looking at them each and every day. And I know some people out there might be saying, well, duh, I already know what my priorities are. But the problem is they live in our subconscious and they don't come to the forefront of our brain. But the key to time management is able to view those priorities because every decision you make about how you use your time should be based on how much what you're about to do is going to support one of those priorities. Oh, so beautiful. that's why it's absolutely critical that before you go out and buy anything related to time management or getting organized, you sit down, you write those priorities and make sure that they are posted. They can be in your phone, they can be displayed on your tablet or they can be on a sticky note posted to your bathroom mirror. But that's absolutely critical as a first step. I've got notebooks all over the place, but I've got a, a long-term and a short-term strategy notebook, these big fat notebooks. And we agree on the strategies and the priorities and write them down. But I, I look at those all the time just because it's easy to get, uh, oh, let's, you know, you can get pulled off in this area, or that area. But if you get off the main topic, you're not going to get there. Exactly. And I know that when I start to fall off the wagon, when I start feeling like my blood pressure is up a little more or I'm feeling a little busier than I'm comfortable with, I'm making sure that I'm heading right back to those priorities. Okay, what am I not doing correctly? What am I not supporting enough? It's just so important that we view those as often as possible daily. Yes. You know, yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, keep going. This is great. Also a part of uh, creating clarity is self-care. Since time management truly is all about mind management because it's about the decisions that we make about our time, it's absolutely critical to take care of this casing that houses your brain and that's your body. So making sure that you get enough sleep each night, making sure that you stay hydrated with water and not just margaritas, that's <laughs> really important to taking care of your body, eating healthy. And so when I bring up these things in client sessions, or in keynotes, a lot of people say, hey, I'm here to learn time management, not to get a nutrition lesson. But what they come to realize is that nutrition and self-care is a part of time management because you're caring for that brain that's going to make decisions about how you use your time. You know what I do every hour to break? What? 50 push-ups. Oh, nice. Yeah, 50 push-ups and then some basic yoga stretches just for, I don't know, more than five minutes. But I have that to look forward to because I want to keep my body. I may not be able to work out that day or I may. It doesn't matter. But mm -hmm. if I do 50 push-ups, you know, for every hour for eight hours or nine hours, then there you go. You've had a good workout. But it also just keeps my mind fresh to your point. Excellent. And so if you told this to a cardiologist, they would be thrilled because most people stay sedentary for two, four, eight hours at a time. And that's really bad for our circulation systems. And oh, then listen, it's mm -hmm. the worst. They've discovered that, as you well know, that mm -hmm. sitting is now the new smoking. I mean, it literally mm -hmm. is as deleterious to us as that horrible habit smoking was for so many years or is for so many years. Yeah, you know, exactly. It screws up your back and your whole immune system. And I was just going to say the chiropractor, and you brought up the back. Yes, our backs, our joints, they get stiff if we sit all day long. So that's why it's so important to get up. And you've also hit on something important by doing some kind of exercise, push-ups, or especially walking. That yes. gets the creative juices flowing in the brain again. And neuroscience has found that even five minutes of walking will help with problem solving, and you come back fresh to your work. Oh, I love that. I, I walk every day, too, but I, I didn't know as little as five minutes would. Uh, mm -hmm. That's fascinating. Yeah. Okay. So if there's ever a time where you cannot do push-ups, if you at least get that five-minute walk-in, then that's going to help your body just as much. Okay. Self-care and uh, mind management. Okay, good. Keep on going about clarity. All right. Well, also a part of creating clarity is making sure that you are comfortable with what you set as your work hours. Now, a lot of people don't stop and think about this, especially entrepreneurs. And entrepreneurs tend to work around the clock because they're working out of their home office, they're in their pajamas, they're comfortable, but they're still working. They never shut off their brains. So part of creating that clarity is deciding if you own your own business, what are your work hours going to be? And if you work for a company, making sure it's crystal clear with that company, what are your work hours? Are you on call in the evenings? What are the boundaries? So that way you can carve out that personal time that you really need for recharging. 
Oh, excellent. Yeah, no, it is perfect. Yeah, sleep is a key part that I think too many people overlook, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes, most definitely. So that, they think they've got to work around the clock. Okay, mm-hmm. wonderful. What else about clarity? Yeah. Well, there's one last part, and that is reflecting with power. A lot of folks, if they even stop to reflect, and this is especially so for women, so ladies, listen to what I'm about to say. We tend to reflect by looking at everything we did incorrectly or everything we did not get done. And that's a terrible way to start off a reflection because you're starting off with the negative. Instead, you want to make sure you reflect with power. You start off by reflecting on your wins, no matter how small they are. It could be something as simple as you remembered to bring in the reusable grocery bags to the the store. So start with anything that went right, anything you did correctly, any tasks you got done And then later on in your reflection, you can take a look at, okay, what do I still need to do or what do I need to improve upon? But it's so important for your mindset and for motivation that you start off your reflection with the positive. I love that. I think that's wonderful. Okay. So take us into uh, Implement uh, Structure and Flow. Absolutely. Now, it's really important that everybody create some kind of structure in their day. And that can look differently to every single one of your friends or every single one of your clients or colleagues. So some folks might have work hours that are from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m., Monday through Friday. Very traditional. Other folks might have work time blocks, especially if they're entrepreneurs working out of their own homes. So you might actually have work blocks of 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., 2 o'clock to 4 p.m., 6 o'clock to 9 p.m. It doesn't matter what the time blocks are as long as they are right for you. And also this is a discussion that you've had with your family. If you're going to be working at times when they're going to be at home and building in this structure to your day helps everybody else around you understand that this is your work time. And it's pretty obvious when you go into a company, when you're working for that particular business, it's obvious. Well, you've walked into the building, you're at work. It's tougher to do that when you're at home, when your family is around you and they keep running into your office because, hey, you're at home, you're working in sweatpants, so you must not really be working. So by creating this structure of work hours, that helps everybody else around you, especially in a home office environment, realize that this is your work time and so you really shouldn't be interrupted. Okay, perfect. And then once you have these time blocks established, you want to break down your tasks and decide how much time should you really be spending on all the different parts of your job or on your business. A lot of us tend to go after low-hanging fruit when we're stressed out or when we're procrastinating and we don't feel like working on something, or maybe we've just been interrupted, we forgot what we were working on, and the first thing we jump back to is low-hanging fruit. So if at all possible, you want to take 15, maybe even 30 minutes, and this is a great investment of your time, and you want to just do a mind liberation, get everything out of your head, what are all the different tasks that I need to do on a daily basis, and figure out which tasks are the high priority tasks. So that way you will focus more of your time on those particular tasks and get those scheduled into your time blocks. Because when you schedule these tasks onto your calendar, you're going to be much more likely to complete them. And if you're completing them and they're the high priority tasks, you're going to be so much more successful with your business or at your job. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love that. Okay. Now, another part of implementing structure and flow, now that you have this structure and you understand how much time you want to spend on different tasks, when you have these mini time blocks, let's say you decide you want to spend 30 minutes cold calling in order to drum up sales. Well, now that you have this estimated time block of 30 minutes, if there's an interruption, maybe you have to put out a proverbial fire or 
maybe you are presented with the greatest opportunity of a lifetime and it needs to take place during that time slot. You said you're going to spend 30 minutes on cold calling. Well, because you know you want to spend 30 minutes, this is how you can morph your calendar. You move that time block forward to a different time. So it's not falling off your radar, but you're also able to handle whatever that interruption was so you don't get knocked so far off track. Yeah, I'm loving this. I've got some systems in place that I've gotten pretty anal about this because I realized that I could just get caught up in a project and do just what you're saying here. Mm -hmm. You know, just let it just take over. And there was another project that maybe wasn't an A priority, but had needed to be done. And I ate up several hours. But if I track the time with these little notebooks I keep, then I can Mm -hmm. say, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I've got to stop now. And but if I don't track it, I don't know how I keep up with it. I just sort of be lost out there. Exactly. And you bring up a very important part of time management that most people don't want to do. And I'll use an example with one of my clients. We'll call her Nancy. When Nancy called me in and I gave her the homework assignment at the end of our first session of tracking her time for a week, she just looked at me and she said, are you kidding me? Do you know how much time that would take? I don't have that time. That's why I called you in here. And so the next week when I came back, she had not tracked her time. At the end of the second session, I said, Nancy, I'm going to ask you again to do this homework. I want you to track your time. And this is my promise to you. If tracking your time does not rock your world, you can fire me and there will be no breach of contract. Wow. I show up for the next session. She had done her homework. And while we were debriefing, there were quite a few tears shed. And she said, oh, my gosh, I wish I had done this years ago. Do you know how much time I lose? And so we were able to go through because she had taken 10, 15 minutes at the end of each day to jot down how much time she spent on things. And because she knew she had this homework assignment, she became more present than she had ever been. And she was able to catch herself procrastinating. She was able to realize how many interruptions she had in a day. And she was able to figure out how many time leaks she had. Time leaks are are what I call, you know, the few seconds or minutes that you lose to procrastination or overwhelm, but they add up throughout the day. And she was losing up to three hours each day from those time leaks. And oh, are- listen, I know that it's possible, as amazing as that sounds, but that's because you, of all the things you're teaching us here, I mean, I, it's taken me a long time to figure out some of these basic principles, but whew, it's made all the difference in the world. So I, I understand why that, those were teary moments. Mm -hmm. And now she is what we would traditionally call right-brained because she's very creative. And yes, we know that science is now saying everybody operates whole brain. But if you go ahead and use the old stereotype of being right-brained, she was so afraid of having structure because she was afraid the structure would limit her creativity. And what she discovered after tracking her time and then allowing me to help her build up the structure time blocks in her day, she realized that her brain had so much more freedom for that creativity because her stress levels had dropped. She was able to focus on things and free up time for all of those more creative projects that she wanted to get done. Well, we've studied for almost 100 years things called innate abilities, which is literally how we're hardwired to communicate, problem solve, and learn. It's one of the one of my passions. And uh, so I understand the right brain, left brain thing. But the fact is, your point is absolutely right, because if you have a certain spate of innate abilities that are logical and or you don't, I'm very right brained. I don't have high concept organization, for example. Mm -hmm. So I'm 10 percentile. Doesn't mean I'm not logical. I'm just it's not what I do naturally. I am more right brain. So all these structural things save me vast amounts of time. And if I didn't do them, I would be, oh, my gosh, instead of getting a B for productivity every year, I'd get a C minus and that wouldn't work. Mm -hmm, Exactly. And what I have found in meeting all of my clients is that they say, well, look at all these time management books that I've purchased and I don't understand why these things aren't working. And part of the problem is that so many of the books are presented and geared toward left brain analytical thinkers. So it's very easy to understand those concepts. So if it can be explained to right brain people in a way that they understand and, and they can be eased into 
to structure, then it's going to be possible for them to be successful with time management. I could not agree more. It's very exciting. Okay, keep on going. This is fascinating. So implementing structure and flow, and now we've talked about the importance of structure, and we've talked about the flow, which is moving these time blocks around. Something else to remember is that when you are building your structure and your time blocks for the day, you actually do not want to block every single minute of the day. So when you are tracking your time, as we talked about earlier, you figure out where your interruptions are, how often you're called to put out those quote unquote fires. Once you understand how often that happens, number one, we can work on prevention, which we'll talk about a little later, but also number two, you realize how much time you need to pad into your day to allow for these interruptions to happen. So if I'm working with an ER nurse, she is not going to be able to structure 100% of her day. We can structure maybe 10% because 90% of her day is reactionary. She needs to be able to accept whatever patients are coming in. You know, if somebody comes in uh, bruised and battered, she can't just say, "Um, can you not interrupt me right now, please, because I need to finish this task. (laughs) Right. So that's why it's important to track your time and understand how many interruptions you have so you can decide, okay, should I only schedule out 25% of my day? Can I schedule out 50% of my day? Or can I go up to maybe 75 or 80% of my day? So you do want to have that structure, but at the same time, you don't want to precisely plan out every single minute of your day because as I mentioned earlier, if you deal with humans or technology, it's just not going to work. (laughs) Exactly. Beautiful. Those are pretty much the high points for implementing structure and flow, unless you want to dig deep into email management, file management, or anything like that? Let's do A. Let's do A, and then we'll see how much time we've got. Okay, great. Well, the A, assemble your team. The example I love to give is James Bond, because James Bond is one of my favorite spies. (laughs) And I love to point out, I realize he's a fictional character, but he is what literature expert Dr. Thomas Shippey calls omni-competent. The man can do anything. He can fly planes and drive fast cars, and he can shoot any weapon if he needs to get out of a situation. And yet James Bond, Mr. Omnicompetent, has a team, and that's why he's successful. He has M to provide him resources. He has Q, who gives him gadgets, and he has Money Penny, who provides him with intel. So if Mr. James Bond needs a team, so do the rest of us. I love this metaphor. That's wonderful. Yeah. And even people who are not fans of James Bond, they've heard of the plots, they've heard of these other characters, and you begin to realize, wow, if he needs this help, so do we. And that's why it's really important that you create both your personal team and your work team. Your personal team should consist of everybody who lives in your household because they've got to be on the same page as you are in order for you to be more successful and in order for them to be successful as well. If you're living in a household of one, like my client, Nancy, then we recruited folks to her personal team. We had her two adult children on board as well as her best friend. Now, if your personal team lives in your household, then you can have a weekly family meeting to discuss what everybody's priorities are for the week and what everybody's schedules are. That way, nothing falls through the cracks and you don't have any more last minute 11 o'clock trips to the store to get materials for a school project. And if your team is not within your household, then you want to schedule one or two calls a month just to help each other stay accountable and make sure that you're staying on track. You need that personal support. The same is true for work. If you are an entrepreneur and you are a department of one, then you create your work team based on who you're interacting with in your business world. So maybe you subcontract things out or maybe you have business colleagues in your city or now, I mean, we're virtual, we're virtually having this podcast. So you can also do virtual calls with your work team, but you, you want to have people in your corner so you can bounce around ideas and run information by them. And that's why it's important that your work team and your personal team are not filled with yes men or yes women. You want spinach in your teeth, friends, the kind of friends who will tell you the truth in a nice way, but they tell you the truth. Exactly. So you, 
Yeah, you want to create those work teams. Now, for anybody who's listening, if they work for a company and they are not assigned a specific department, then start scouting around for different coworkers who you can talk to, especially if you work with them frequently on projects, because those are the folks you need to be in communication with so you can support each other. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Is there more to A? That, in a nutshell, is A. We can. Deep dive into some communication because that's where time management can fall off as well. But in a nutshell, that covers assemble your team. Well, let's take just a few minutes and talk about some specific tactical stuff, just like you said about communication that listeners can benefit from. Absolutely. For some reason, a lot of us are so shy about expressing our feelings when somebody walks in and interrupts us. And a part of what's important is to learn to be more assertive. And assertive does not mean being an ogre or being mean. It's just simply stating what you would like to have happen. So if you have a coworker who comes in and interrupts, you can look up and say, I would love to chat with you right now, but I am on a deadline. I need to finish this by 3.30 today. Can we make an appointment so you can come back later, say 3.45? That way I can give you my full attention because honestly, I would not pay attention to you right now. And most people are willing to respect that. If they're not, then that's a whole different conversation. But as too many of us are shy. We're, we're afraid of hurting others' feelings, but we're not hurting somebody's feelings if we're trying to serve them better by making sure that we finish what we need to. Yes, yes. Well, it's boundary setting. Mm-hmm. It's the hardest thing in the world for a huge percentage of the population, just setting good boundaries. But if you express it as clearly as you just did, mm-hmm. you know, unless they're a complete, uh, you know what, they'll right. understand. They'll understand. Exactly. It. And if they're a complete, you know what, well, I'm sorry, I don't care. <laughs> Get out of my office. <laughs> right. Exactly. Because is that the kind of person you want to help anyway? Right. No. Now, yeah. And when the tables are turned at the same time, you can't be a you know what as well. So it's not like you can throw something at somebody and say, get out of my office. I don't want to no. talk to you right now. You just no. need to be very clear and diplomatic with whatever expectations you're expressing. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. What'd you say about emails? Well, a lot of folks will not want to hear this, but the number one distractor in an office is the email notification going off on the computer or on the tablet. So one of the first things I request that my clients do is to turn off the email notifications. And you should see the panic in their eyes when I make this request. But it's very important to understand that I am not requesting that you stop checking email. What I'm requesting is that you check email when your brain is ready to receive it. Because neuroscience tells us whenever we switch a task, we're losing an average of 60 seconds of brain restart time. So if we get an average of 100 emails a day and we're losing 100 minutes in brain restart time, my goodness, look at how much time you can get back just from turning off that indicator. With some clients, they have to check their email quite frequently. That's fine. Check it every 10 minutes. But at least you have 10 minutes of focused time where your brain can work on a task. Wow. Yes, it's amazing. It's amazing how much information we process in the course of even an, a minute or an hour. It's amazing. One final bit of advice. Lay it on us. I would highly recommend that you know what your top three priorities are for your day before you open your email inbox. Because too often we let email run our day and all we end up working on is that low hanging fruit. So make sure you understand what top three tasks need to get done before you open email in the morning. Perfect. I love that. Helene Segura, what a great pleasure having you on the show today. I know that listeners have learned many lessons about how to uh, tell your time what to do, which we Mm -hmm. all need to do even more. So how do those listeners get in touch with you? They can go to my website, timemanagementrevolution.com. And if anything during our interview piqued their interest, then I have great news because my book is on that website too. And that deep dives into every single tactic that you would ever need in order to be successful with your time. And while you are on that page, timemanagementrevolution.com, make sure that you sign up for my complimentary productivity kit. I have my time blocking 
chart in there that I use with my clients. So you can download that. I have a podcast on procrastinating, so don't delay. Make sure you watch it. Ha ha. And oh, I have some, oh. yeah, I have some other resources in there. So I hope that all of your listeners will take advantage of those tools. Yes, please. And listeners know you can go to discoveryourtalentpodcast.com, click on podcast in the nav bar and find the show notes of all these points and the connecting points as well. In closing, every one of us is born with unique talents and gifts. We don't learn them. We can't ignore them. They're just a part of who we are, our DNA. Whenever we discover them and use them in our lives and careers, we do not merely survive. We thrive in every way possible. So until next time, all my best and whatever you do, have fun out there today. 